we give it, and we're building the future of uh, charitable donations on blockchain. Uh, next. <laughs> and in this presentation, I will talk about uh, the problem with charity, why we started give it, and the promise of blockchain that we heard about just now, uh, and how we bring this into practice, uh, how we plan to bring this to other charities, and also I will talk about some challenges. So, a couple, this is in Dutch, but uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I got this email, basically asked me uh, to donate 45 euros to save the elephants, and uh, they would buy like this kit to give to the guards in the parks to fight off uh, butchers. And this was something that really concerned me, so I was about to, I took my credit card, wanted to do, donate 45 euros, and then all these questions popped up in my head. Can you do this? Uh, one back. Yeah, it's like, okay, so how do they actually spend my money? And is it effectively being spent? And what is the plan? And how can I contribute to this? Is there another way that I can contribute? So there's all these questions. And I think a lot of people uh, that donate to charity have the same kind of question, at least people that I know, that we know as given. And next one. The problem is that where your money uh, ends up. You, uh, a lot of people think that like, the overhead costs are really high, while well, actually I've figured out that a lot of charities are quite transparent about, how, about their overhead, right? But yeah, it's still something that they communicate and it's like, it is uh, a centralized truth. As a donor, you can never be sure where your money ends up. And I think the charities themselves don't know if I give them 10 pounds where that money ends up. It's just a big pool of money and they distribute it to all their projects and campaigns. So, I just said it. It's a centralized truth, but <laughs> next one. The great thing is we got blockchain now, right? So we have this decentralized uh, truth through distributed ledger. We have transparency. We can do governance tokens. We can do instant transactions. So you have all these nice things that you can do that uh, we just heard about. Uh, but the question is, how do you put this into practice? We all have this, that's why we're here, right? So. How do you start with this? We heard about it. And that's what we do at GIFIT. So we really try to bring this into practice and build this future of charity. And oh, you go too fast. <laughs> uh, so we are ourselves, we are a charity. We get funding from the Ethereum space. Uh, and in return, we just try to uh, model this new future and do a big experiment with governance and building on top of this technology. And the way that we do that is, is we track everything through smart contracts. So all the tasks that we do as a team, and uh, we put them on, as a, on, the, on the blockchain as a smart contract. For example, can be building a feature, designing a logo, buy some goods, pay salary. And this contract, it is like, it has a budget, and then there's a reviewer. And the reviewer basically approves if the task was done. And if the task was done, you can claim your money. So we use smart contracts to track all our expenses and be accountable to, uh, to our donors. Next one. But of course, like somebody said here, like how does blockchain look? It is like really <coughs> an abstract. You can look at blockchain, but it's quite a tech thing. So we also try to have this public face of being 100% transparent. We build like this video wall where everybody posts a video of the task that he did. We have like, uh, our Google Drive is open and public. You can join our meetings and participate in the direction of Give It. So we really try to be a transparent charity where you can actually contribute not only with money, but also with knowledge, resources, ideas, or whatever you want. Um, but that also needs some new form of governance. Uh, this is not blockchain related, but if you, have, if you want to be transparent, you also need a transparent governance model. And we picked Holacracy as our governance model. And in the Holacracy, you basically have no hierarchy. Everybody has an equal say, and you work in circles. For example, you have the marketing circle and the product circle, and each circle consists of people and they define together in a governance meeting, they define the direction of that specific circle. And that makes it really powerful because uh, all those governance meetings, we do them every week, and you can actually join. So if you are a marketing expert, expert or a, I don't know, a charity expert, or a 
product expert, you can just join and help us with uh, building Givet. So, next one. Our vision is to bring this kind of transparency to other uh, charities. And of course, in the process, if we distribute a billion dollars, that would be even better. But our first aim is like to help guys like uh, organizations like Amnesty to be more, or other charities or projects to be like transparent and be and, and uh, get started with blockchain. So we do that by creating a platform. Uh, we call it the, the Give a Decentralized Application. So it's basically a website, but it runs on blockchain. Uh, this is how it looks. Uh, I'm just going to explain it now. After this presentation, if you want a demo, I can also show it uh, uh, on my computer. Um, yeah, let's go to the next one. So how it works, you have campaigns and milestones. And a campaign is basically a project. For example, I'm going to install a thousand solar panels. And I put that on the blockchain in the smart contract. And that project has milestones. So it's like the project plan. And each milestone needs some, in this case, ether. Uh, it is the cryptocurrency. And money flows from the campaign to the milestones, and then it gets executed. Uh, next. But we also have something like decentralized altruistic communities. So that is basically, you can see there's a fund with a cause. I think uh, can we, we can form a community here that is uh, stop global warming. And we're going to fundraise for that, but we don't do actually anything, we just, you know, give money to campaigns. I think uh, Amnesty could be a, a decentralized uh, a deck, improving uh, human rights, and then they can move the donations to campaigns that actually do this. So if you go to the next slide. So within our system, money can flow from a deck to a campaign, and in the end, it ends up in milestones. And it's all based on smart contracts, so you can see the money going flowing on the blockchain. Now let's look from the donor side. Uh, so when I donate, I can be a donor that, you know, don't really, I, I, I want to stop global warming, but I don't really know any project that, that, does, that does this, right? So I just give my money to the stop global warming community, and they will find a good cause for my money. But it can also be very involved. They can say, oh, I want to donate to the specific campaign, or even to the specific milestone, so I can really pick uh, where I want to put my money. And in return, I also get tokens, uh, which is a, like a cryptographic receipt or a currency. And now it can be oh, just a receipt, like I donate something and I get a token in return, but you can also build a governance model on top of it. For example, the token can give me a voting right in the direction of the campaign, or uh, maybe the deck needs to say, uh, wants to have a vote on where the money should go. So you can do a lot of interesting things with that. Now, <coughs> when you donate, uh, it also means that your donation can be delegated. It's uh, through the system. So if I donate to the DSC, it, the DSC can move my money to the campaign, and then the campaign can move the money to a milestone. And the current situation with, with established charity is that you don't know where your money goes. But here, every time your money is being moved, it, the system actually asks you, like, do you agree with that delegation? And you can disagree or you can uh, approve it. And uh, if, if you approve it, the money moves forward. So you stay in control of your donation. Now, then, uh, in the end, all the money ends up in, uh, in a milestone, uh, which I talked about before. And this is a, a difficult problem. It's like, when does money leave the system? It's the last mile problem. And we have this reviewer role, which basically uh, yeah, has to uh, judge if the milestone was accomplished. But some things are not so easy to accomplish, like improving living quality in a village, for example. It's, it's not something that you can easily judge if it's been, you have to measure that, uh, right? So the reviewer can, it doesn't have to be a person. You can also extend it, it can be like a group of persons or AI or an oracle or satellite images, whatever you need you know, to have this review role. So you can extend this functionality through smart contracts. Um, 
And I think that is basically all the features of what we are building. And we run Givit on top of this platform. And if you want, yeah, like I said, I can give you a demo later. Uh, we were, we are live with this, or live. We were live with it. And we track our own charity on, on a platform, but we ran into some challenges the last uh, month. Uh, because of the crypto kitties, that's actually when it started. <laughs> Those kitties. <laughs> uh, yeah, they became so popular that the transactions, the cost of a transaction on Ethereum became so high that uh, the network became uh, congested and we couldn't deploy our contracts and uh, it became really unworkable. And on top of that, there's now also a bug with uh, calculating the price of transactions so that we decided to move back to the test block net again. Uh, and now we're working with uh, people from the Ethereum space to find solutions for that. So <laughs> it's not, the technology is, it's fragile, it's experimental. Um, then there's also the case of contract security. Uh, you probably, some of you heard that contracts get hacked and a lot of money got stolen. And we are very aware of that. So. Uh, we know our contracts need to be audited and they need to be tested. So we, all our projects that we put on our own system, there's like small amounts of money just to reduce the risk of being hacked. Then there's the volatility of Ethereum. So I think yesterday the market crashed 40%. Uh, so if you had fundraised uh, uh, all that you needed, then today it would be worth uh, <laughs> a bit. It was actually a suicide uh, uh, item on Reddit about that. Um, so that's also a, pr uh, a, yeah, a thing that needs to be solved, just like especially for fundraising on, uh, on uh, blockchain. And the last thing is transparency, which is not really blockchain related, but if you have this, you, if you can be so transparent, then as an organization, you also have to uh, yeah, to adjust to this kind of transparency. And this is not very easy. At Gifit, we try to be transparent, but okay, I guess uh, we do our best, but it's, it's not an easy thing because we all have this mindset of hierarchy and uh, yeah, traditional, uh, sometimes secrecy is good, right? <laughs> Let's keep it at that. So these are the challenges that we run into. And um, is that next slide? Oh yeah, to finalize. So we know that blockchain brings transparency, efficiency, and all these promises. And it is hard to, uh, to bring this into practice. And at give it, we, we try to prove that it can happen. And we also want to bring that to other charities. So if any of you wants to get started, we can help you to get started. But the tech is not really ready for prime time. It's basically a big experiment. But it is coming, and it is a reality now. And I think all charities should at least look at it, because it's going to be major. And that is, I think, the end of my presentation. I would like to invite you all, if any of you want to contribute in any way, uh, or help us out. We are very much looking for feedback from established charities on what we're doing. So it would be great if, uh, yeah, come to talk to me or uh, at Voitech. Uh, I can give you a product demo later on if you want. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> to the chap earlier on that talked about the cynicism thing, really important actually that you bring all your critical faculties to bear on this subject because you know there's a when you read up on it and start researching it, um, there's all this potential. It can sound like it's a panacea for the world's problems. Um, it's going to help in a, a lot of ways, um, but you have to be realistic about that. Um, so that's really, really interesting to, uh, to hear that side.